Hello everybody. In today's tutorial I'm going to explain a bit about the difference between a mutable class and an immutable class. Uh, we're going to see an example of uh, why sometimes mutable classes can be a bit more dangerous and I'll show you how you can transform a mutable class into an immutable class. So we'll start with this project that is already created. I assumed you know how to do that. And I've created a package, com example mutable example, and inside I've already created a skeleton of a main file that we're going to, going to use. These are the steps that we're going to take to show an example of how a, a mutable class can be a bit dangerous. Step one, we'll create two collections of points. Step two, we'll create two points. Step three, we'll add the points to the first collection. Step four, we'll edit the points, which is also called mutating them, and we'll add them to the second collection. Then we'll see what happens. We'll start by creating the point class. We'll actually call it mutable point. And we're going to make a quick implementation here. Um, first of all, although this is not completely relevant to the tutorial, we're not going to make this class public. We're actually going to make it package private. And we're going to make it final, so uh, no subclasses can be made of it. We're going to add two fields private double x and private double y. We'll make a quick public construction constructor, sorry, mutable point that will accept two parameters, double x, double y, and we'll set those two parameters. This x, this dot x, I'm sorry, equals x, and this dot y equals y. Then in order to make this class mutable, we're going to create public setters and getters. So we'll start with public the getter, double get x, which accepts, which receives no parameters, and simply returns x. And the setter, public void set x, this does receive a new value for x. And does the same as the constructor sets x to the new value. We'll copy these for the y parameter. Sorry about that. And now we're done with our uh, mutable point class. One more thing, just so we can actually see this work well, we're going to add an overrided to string method. Override public string to string. This will override the method in the object class. And what we do here is a quick string where we can show the point. So open parentheses, the x, a comma, the y, and close parentheses. And that way we can print out a point. We go back to the main and we'll start by creating the two collections of points. So we'll make a list of mutable points. We'll call it start locations and it will be equal to a new array list of mutable points. We'll also well, we have to actually do the imports. If you press, on a Mac, if you press Command Shift O, it will actually do the imports automatically. So we'll add list there. I'm not sure in other platforms what is the uh, keyboard shortcut. We'll also add a second collection, which we'll call end locations. Now imagine we're programming some sort of game or uh, some sort of um, application where we're going, we're going to show those points on the screen. Now we'll create two points and we'll call them mutable point my location new mutable point we'll place ourselves in 1 1 and we'll copy this and make your location and we'll place you in 10 20 now we're going to add these two points to the first collection. So we write start locations dot add 
and my location and the same for your location. Now at this point we actually want to see what we've done so I'm going to use the system.out.println in order to show this. So I'll write start locations two dots and here we're actually going to use a handy li library method uh, which is arrays dot to string and here we're going to take our start locations array list and this is not actually an array yet so we convert it to an array with a to array method that way it'll print it out nicely in using this overrided to string method which we added to the mutable point class so now that that's done we can run it and we see what we were expecting start locations is an array which contains two points 1 1 and 10 20 so now the next step is we're going to edit these two points and we're going to add them to the second collection now in what situation could this happen um, at some point maybe if on the in the course of the application being run uh, are the positions my position and your position change so in that case it would be logical for us to take my location and edit it how do we do that we do my we write my location dot and we use the setter that we wrote so we're actually going to place me in 100 and the y separately 100 as well so now I am in position 100 100 and we'll edit your location and we'll set it to minus 10 and minus 20 for the y now that we've edited the points we're going to add them to the second collection so end locations dot add my location and end locations dot add your location and now that we're ready we're going to print out this new collection to the screen so this time the end locations arrays to strings end locations to array and we'll press uh, we'll press play we'll run it and we see the following start locations appears to have 1 1 10 20 which were the start locations which is fine end locations has 100 100 minus 10 minus 20 now the problem is that if we once again without doing any changes print out the start locations like this and we run we actually see that the start locations have changed they are no longer 1 1 10 20 but they are 100 100 minus 10 minus 20 just like the end locations this is because the mutable point class is mutable and this is the danger of using mutable classes when we have a larger program with many different sections of code edited uh, working on the same objects like for example here we had two different collections of of mutable points working on the same points if they are allowed to edit them then they not only edit them from themselves but they also edit the points for everyone else so this is a bit uh, this can be a bit confusing and it can lead to errors in programming which is why um, when when appropriate it is usually better to start at least with immutable classes that is simply a class that cannot be modified now there's no aspect to the Java code there's no language construct which lets us make a class immutable it's simply a matter of what methods we give to access and mutate the data inside our class in this example the mutable point has getters and setters and the presence of the setters is what actually makes this class mutable so if we were to eliminate the setters we would uh, obtain an immutable class now I'm not going to modify the, mod uh, the mutable point what I'm actually going to do is create a new immutable point class 
and we're actually going to copy everything and paste it here and make the modifications that are appropriate immutable immutable and there we are now up to now it's exactly the same as the mutable point what we're going to do is first of all we can enforce immutability, immutability in many different ways but the instance method is already a great place to start the x and y were declared were not declared to be final and this makes the instance variables themselves mutable so if we start by placing a final modifier here that's already a great first step to making this class immutable because even if we wanted to we could not modify the value of x and y now the compiler will actually help us here and will show us two errors in the setters themselves which is where we were trying to mutate so now we'll erase the setters and we'll keep only the getters and now we already have an immutable class now as I said before immutability is something that you have to check as a programmer you have to make sure your class is immutable by not allowing any code to mutate your class if we go back to the main and if we were to do this again with the immutable version of the point class we would not be able to find this behavior here why well because we would not be able to set the x the new x and y values therefore if we wanted to actually edit the locations and add them to a second collection which is the end locations we would be forced to actually make new points and those new points would have the new values 100 100 and minus 10 minus 20 now I'm not going to show that now because it's kind of the same code that we have here but if you take the immutable point class and you try to replicate this code you'll quickly see that you cannot modify the immutable point and that you're forced to create new mutable new immutable points I'm sorry about that new immutable points which you could call my end location your end location and you could call these my start location and your start location this helps us make programs that have a smaller chance of actually being incorrect so my advice is when you're starting a new class try especially with simple classes try your best to make them immutable and if mutability um, turns out to be necessary you can add it later on and hopefully in the smallest amount possible like for example making one field mutable if we have to well that's it for today's tutorial i hope you liked it and uh, well we'll see you next time